In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through installing Stan's Robot Shop, our free sample microservices application, and we're going to install it on Kubernetes. There's another tutorial where we install Stan's Robot Shop just on Docker, but this one is the Kubernetes flavored version. What you're going to need is a Kubernetes cluster. You could use Google Compute for this. I'd recommend use three nodes of the two CPU standard profile. So that gives you two CPUs and seven and a half gigs of memory per node. Alternatively, if you've got a really powerful laptop, then you can use Minikube and run it locally, but you will need to give it four CPUs and four gigs of memory in order to get Stan's Robot Shop and then later on the Instanner agent all up and running. Additionally, on your computer, you'll need kubectl and git. We're gonna use git to clone the robot shop repository and then kubectl to deploy the application using the deployment files included in that repository. Let's get started. Here we are at the shell prompt on my laptop. I've already started my Kubernetes cluster actually up in Google and I've configured kubectl to be pointing at that. So I can do a quick cluster info and yeah, I can see everything's up and running and there's various ancillary services that get started for you automatically inside Google. Next thing we need to do is clone the repository so that I can have all the deployment files and everything locally. So we'll just put that command in there. So we're just going to do a git clone of the repository on GitHub in standard robot shop. That'll pull that down. There it is. So we have our robot shop directory. If we change into that directory now, we've got our various files there. There's a k8s subdirectory and inside there are all the deployment descriptors for the various services that make up Stan's robot shop. First thing I will do is create a namespace. So that gives us a containment to run robot shop in and now I just got to push all the deployment descriptors into there. So we'll specify the namespace we created earlier and then apply minus F and specify the directory. There it is. So that's all the deployments pushed up into Kubernetes. It will take Kubernetes a little while to activate all those deployments. Now that we've given that a few minutes to get everything started, let's just check the progress. Here we can see that all the pods that make up Stan's Robot Shop are up and running. In order to make it accessible to the outside world, we'll just need to edit the service description for the web service. This command brings up the service description in my local editor, and if we look for type, we can see that it's currently set to cluster IP. For Google Compute, we'll want to change that to load balancer, and for Minikube, we're gonna change that to node port. Having changed that, save the file and the changes will be applied. Now I need to check the progress on that. It'll take uh, a few minutes for an IP address to be associated with that. You can check the progress by using this command, just getting the service, that web service back. And we can see after a, a few minutes, we now have an external IP. So Stan's robot shop will be available on that IP address on port 8080. I've opened my browser running Stan's Robot Shop port 8080 and we can see that the uh, launch of the Robot Shop was successful and I can interact with it and everything seems to be working quite nicely. Now that we've got Stan's Robot Shop up and running so we have something to monitor. Go on to the next tutorial to see how quickly and easily you can get started with the Instanner agent and start monitoring the application.